I'm Jasmine Miles Long and I'm a taxidermist and natural history conservationist and restorer. I'm conserving this stingray for Hastings Museum and Art Gallery. Amazingly, this stingray was caught by fishing line off the end of Hastings Pier back in 1910, so it's over 110 years old. And so it's an important object from the museum's collection. When working on the stingray, I gently clean away the dust and assess the damage. I will use a special Japanese tissue paper and conservation glue to bond the skin back together where it is split. I'll also use the tissue paper around the glass eyes, as the clay that was originally used has fallen away and the eyes have become loose. I'll then use paints to blend in the tissue paper. Some could argue that the whole stingray could use a new look of paint or varnish. But it's important when working with old objects that the essence of the object is not lost. We know this stingray is over a hundred years old, so we don't want him to look shiny and brand new because his age is part of his story and character. Natural history collections are an important source of information documenting the diversity of nature on our planet from the past and in the present. Museums that have a natural history collection, such as Hastings Museum and Art Gallery, will have a varied range of species, some that may be endangered or even extinct. So it's very important that these objects are well looked after, as they're very fragile and prone to damage if they're not cared for properly. Taxidermy can get damaged easily by being overhandled or if it's kept in a room with fluctuating temperature and humidity. Taxidermy also needs to be kept clean and free of dust and dirt. Moths and carpet beetles will eat the skin and damage the fur and feathers and other pests, even rats might have a chew. And poor storage can create problems, because if the taxidermy is squished up against other objects, tails or ears may snap off or become damaged. Taxidermy is created by cleaning and preparing the skin of an animal which is then sculpted over a form made by the taxidermist. In modern taxidermy, we create solid forms of the muscular structure, but historically many skins were simply stuffed with wood wool, which is a soft wooden shaving. And this is where the phrase stuffed animals comes from. But this method does not provide adequate support for the skin and over time the skin can distort and crack. Conservation is the term used for cleaning and stabilising an object that is damaged, so that it will not deteriorate any further. It involves gentle techniques that will not damage or permanently change an object, and materials that are added should be conservation grade and not from another taxidermy skin, which could complicate any biological data of the animal. For example, if a patch of fur needs replacing because of moth damage, it would be better to replace this patch of fur using Japanese tissue paper rather than the real fur from another animal. For in the future, a scientist may be conducting research and need to take a DNA sample from the taxidermy skin, but they might accidentally collect the wrong DNA from the new patch of fur, ruining their research. Restoration is the continued process of conservation, where it's deemed that the object needs more than just conservation to make it stable or useful. And if it's decided that restoration can go ahead, then more permanent materials can be used, or possibly fur from another animal, and other measures to make the taxidermy safe and looking its best. One thing that's important to remember when handling old taxidermy is to wear gloves and wash your hands afterwards, as the skin may contain some harmful toxins. Arsenic, which is a toxic chemical, was widely used up until the 1980s as an insecticide and preservative within taxidermy, but it's also very poisonous to humans. When undertaking this conservation, I will write down the treatment I've given to the stingray and which materials I've used. This information will then be stored in the stingray's notes at the museum, so in the future others will know what is original to the ray and what I did to conserve it.